Gordon Forbes is renovating a 1930s mahogany performance dinghy, and he's trying to do it for as little money as possible. Well, I think I'm going to try to use the originals first because I'm a and I don't like spending money. But this small boat is becoming a bigger problem than Gordon had envisaged. Tom had said, you're really underestimating how long it's going to take you, and that is for sure. Um, I reckon it's going to be at least twice as long as I thought. And what was intended as a summer recreation is slowly becoming a full-time job. The project has interrupted work life um, and will stop me doing some work, uh, paid work. So Gordon's dream to get this boat back on the river is proving more difficult than he originally thought. There are a number of other things that have, uh, have cropped up. You know, some of it is still to, uh, to be resolved. Gordon's first job is to secure the boat onto dry land away from the water's edge. OK, I underestimated the size and I underestimated the weight. Yeah. But I thought that we could turn her to get her right. It wasn't a big deal. You know, I mean, these sort of things, you know it's going to come out and certain problems pop their heads up and you've just got to, to solve them and get over them. With the sun beating down and the renovation in danger of stopping before it even starts, Gordon decides to have a quick break. I think you should give up the project and then have a beer. Refreshed and with renewed vigour, Gordon decides to try a different approach. It's much easier floating them onto a, onto a cradle. Yeah. That might be an idea, actually. Brilliant. With that uh, thought in yeah. mind, Gordon decides to kick-start this project. I'll buy the beer tonight. By I'll calling in the professionals. Cavalry's coming. Simon and Mike work in the neighbouring boatyard, and pulling out stubborn boats is meat and veg to them. Straight it up to this line here. Yeah. So we can get it for his direct pull up there. As it comes up here, we can then turn it on its side onto the trolley. But these are no ordinary shipwrights. Traditions on the island are still treasured, and for these guys, problems like this can be sorted out the good old-fashioned way. Application of leverage. Okay, pull it up. Let it go. Yeah. Okay, keep taking slack there, Mike. Now pull up. Two, three. Up. Okay, that's fine. That'll do there. We have about eight people. We could probably do it. Tricky one. Your wallet. <laughs> Once on the trolley, Simon can relieve the weight off Mike and finish the job with the right tools. OK, be back in a minute. Off to the boat yard to grab a block and tackle. That'll do the job, hopefully. Just make it a bit, uh, a bit easier to work with. <laughs> Chainsaws, please. Uh, box of matches. <laughs> well, you own a boat. And what's uh, a boat? A big hole in the water into which you throw large amounts of money. He's just realising. For such a small boat, <laughs> Gordon's first task was a real challenge. In the next couple of weeks, he'll have to manage his time carefully. The next stage of the project is crucial to the final outcome. Another beautiful day beckons Gordon to the river, and he's keen for a quick cruise before continuing work on the Sharpie. I haven't underestimated how long it'll take to do the varnishing, but I may have underestimated how long it'll take to do the preparation, and that is more important. The key to making the Sharpie look beautiful will be in the varnishing, and without a properly prepared surface to work on, Gordon will be slowing up the whole project. Okay, what I'm doing now, taking off 
the top coat of varnish uh, and looking at the various states of each bit of wood. This includes scraping off the bitumen from the bottom of the boat that was used to keep it watertight. It's funny, you can smell this stuff and it's like, uh, it's like laying down new asphalt on a road. And the whole boat will need to be sanded down in preparation for the varnish. It's, it's, it's getting there a lot of problem with the, the pattern left within the wood uh, from the cracked varnish. Um, and that's taking a lot of time because I don't want to go too far into the wood and the sanding. In fact, for the next couple of weeks, all Gordon will be doing is scraping and sanding. That's messy stuff, that's for sure. <laughs> Fed up with doing everything by hand, Gordon has finally given in to modernity and purchased an orbital sander. But the constant grind is weighing heavy on his mind. Scraping and scraping and scraping and scraping and sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. It's not a boring task, even spending days and days and days on end sanding a boat. It's not boring, it's just exhausting. The project has also taken him further away from his idyllic lifestyle on the river. I haven't been on my other boat for two weeks. And I, uh, I, I find that, you know, a bit, a bit difficult to handle. And what was planned as a quiet summer with his job has turned out quite the opposite. It's always difficult to turn down paid work. Um, I wasn't out looking for paid work. This is the, the main thing. Um, and the other part to it is, if I turn them down now, uh, once this is all launched and, and put to bed, uh, I need to get some work again. So uh, I can't afford to say, no, I'm not doing any work all summer. It seems that for once, this little boat has knocked Gordon's perfect work-life balance off kilter. It's, it's just balancing everything off, you know, between uh, work and the boat and a bit of leisure time. It's heartbreaking. Gordon's hard work has paid off and with a permanent roof over her head for the foreseeable future, the Sharpie has taken on a spectacular transformation. A lot of progress made in the past week. Uh, it, the boat is starting to look really nice at wood level, you know, looking right at the grain. You know, if you remember the state of the boat originally, it was all this horrible cracked varnish on it. And seeing the wood come back up as good as new, I find it very rewarding. And I'm, I'm now looking forward to very much the next few days to, uh, to getting the first coat of varnish on. That will give me an idea of what it's going to look like at the end of the day. Work and life, the great balance. Well, Gordon's the expert, isn't he? He's the man who's got it right. And I think he has most of the time. The thing is, right now, the issue of work when it comes to the Sharpie is a very finely balanced one. There's no doubt that from a slow start, Gordon has more recently put in a big effort. But there are some very important decisions that haven't been made. When Gordon started this project, it looked eminently doable. And yet, time's going on. It's closing in on Gordon. I don't know if he's going to get there. He's still cleaning up for the varnish. He hasn't put the decks back on or even started to rub them down. No decision's been made about whether they're going to be kept or whether there are going to be new ones. And then there's the rig. Nothing much has happened at all. Well, nothing's happened apart from maybe a mainsail that we haven't seen and we're not sure about the measurements of. I need to know before I leave here that you understand what you've got to do to make this rig work. And at the moment, I'm unconvinced about that. There is loads of work still to do. He's living the life and he's enjoying himself, but he's got to get that work done. Otherwise, in the end, the satisfaction is not going to be there. This boat sits on a knife edge between success and failure. If Gordon can't finish the varnishing, buy and fit the right rig whilst fixing the sail, it will be doomed. If he can, 
This boat will at last, after 20 years, sail the tranquil waters of Eel Pie Island again. That is going to be scary, just because it's getting so close to the end and there's still so much work to do. Join us in the next episode to find out if Gordon makes it.